Sorry for that interruption. Again, this is chapter six, lesson six, part two. So we were looking at clues in the problem. This says rectangle K L M N is centered at the origin. That tells us that we can use the coordinates from L and recognize that they are going to be equidistant from the origin because the rectangle is centered at the origin. So let's do this step by step. We know that L has coordinates A and B. That tells us that when we look at point M, it's going to share the same x-axis that L has because they both fall on the line that crosses the x-axis at the same point. So L has x-coordinate A, therefore M also has x-coordinate A. And then again, because the rectangle KLMN is centered at the origin, we know that L is equidistant, point L, is equidistant from the x-axis as M is. So we know that the distance is still going to be B. However, because it lies below the origin, we know that this is going to become a negative B instead of a positive B. So M, the coordinates are A, negative B. Similarly for N, we know it's going to share the same Y-coordinate as M is. They're both going to lie on negative B on the y-axis and it's going to be it's also equidistant from the y-axis as m is however it lies on the left hand side of the x-axis so rather than a positive we have a negative a so that our coordinates for n are negative a negative b and lastly to find k we do the same thing we know k is going to share the same x-axis as n. They both hit the x-axis at negative a. And it's going to have the same y-coordinate as l does. Its y-coordinate will be a positive b because both k and l lie above the origin. So you could have solved it this way. But another way you could have done this is just by remembering the quadrants when we have a graph with an x and y, uh, x and y axis. We're going to have quadrant 1 up here, Roman numeral 1. Quadrant 2 is here. Quadrant 3, 1, 2, 3, right here. And quadrant 4 is going to be here. So these quadrants tell us what, uh, positive or negative, what signs our coordinates are going to have. So any point that lies in quadrant 1 is going to have a positive x-coordinate and a positive y-coordinate. For quadrant 2, anything, any point that lies within quadrant 2 is going to have a positive x-coordinate because it lies on the right-hand side of the origin. But it's going to have a negative y-coordinate because it lies below the origin. Anything in quadrant 3 is going to be a negative x-coordinate with a negative y-coordinate because it lies on the left-hand side of the origin as well as on the bottom. So both coordinates are going to be negative. And for quadrant 4, that's a v. You can't really tell. Uh, for Roman numeral 4, quadrant 4, anything any point that lies in quadrant 4 is going to have a positive x and a positive, I'm sorry, positive x because it's above the origin, but a negative y because it's on the left of the origin or the y-axis. So either strategies would have worked. You could have either used x and y from L to figure out the x and y of m and m k, or you could have simply looked in at the variables it uses, a and b, and then applied the respective signs um, that are appropriate given which quadrant each of the points lie in. Either way would have worked. Okay. Example 3 for, uh, on page 344 says, Use the properties of parallelogram O, P, Q, R to find the missing coordinates. Do not use any, vari any new variables. So here we have the parallelogram O, P, Q, R. We're given the coordinates for point R, which are B, C, and the coordinates for P, which are S, 0. And we're asked to find the coordinates for Q. So because Q and R lie on the same line, the same horizontal line, 
we know that the y-axis is going to be, I'm sorry, the y-coordinate for q is going to be the same as r because they both lie on that, they both lie on the same line that crosses the y-axis at the same point. So, we know that the y-coordinate for q is going to be c. Now we need to find the x-coordinate. For this, we need to look at line OP. For line OP, the distance between point O and P is going to be the s-coordinate, right, because it lies s distance away from each other. And then we have to use the properties of a parallelogram to recognize that line OP is going to be congruent to RQ. So we know that because the distance between O and P is s, the distance between R and Q must also be s. So we know we're going to use s. But in addition, we also have to take into account all of the space between the y-axis and r, all of this space right here. So in order to do that, we need to find the distance between the y-axis and r, which is already given to us in the x-coordinate b, the distance from the y-axis or the origin to b, I'm sorry, to r, point r right here is going to be b. So then we just have to add this total plus this total distance. So our x-coordinate becomes s plus b. So our q, the coordinates for q are s plus b and c. So that is all for chapter 6, lesson 6. Your homework for tonight is th page 344 to 346, numbers 1 to 29 all. Enjoy!